Hello, fellow alchemists. Welcome back to our, uh, wow, I don't know how to call this, but basically I wanted to get back to some more uh, interesting parts about Elixir. Uh, I do want to go back to my series about how to do a static, static site generators and things like that. Uh, but with my week this week, I've been working a lot on getting some podcasts up and going. And so, um, but there was something else I did want to cover. And now that we have Elixir 1.12 coming out around the corner, one of the coolest features that's coming out is the ability to use Elixir more as a scripting language. So I think they kind of compared it to, uh, you know, with Python, you can easily script out what you want to do and you can just run it, right? Well, the nice part about uh, this is that now we have something within Elixir uh, that just is coming out now with Elixir 1.12, of course, being the first one. It's something called mix install. And so what I have over here is a very, very simple uh, demonstration of what this actually looks like, right? And so at the beginning of your project, you can run this command called mix.install, and you give it a list of your dependencies. Um, there's also a couple other things that you could do, like verbosely log out some information and so forth. Uh, but in this case, you can just give it a list of your dependencies. They're basically like the depths function we have within our mix project. And you can say, okay, you give it a tuple within there, and you say, okay, I want this you know, dependency and also with this kind of version, right? You can do the same version you do right now. And then with that, uh, you can actually use that code. So what's going to happen at the scenes is that Mix or Elixir or whatever is going to be running. So I guess actually Mix itself, of course, is going to actually run out to Hex and grab those dependencies if you don't already have them running. Uh, sorry, if you don't already have them installed, compile them and then actually run this script. So this script, as you can see over here, is script.exs. So it is an Elixir script. And so, yeah, with this, it's just very simple. Just take some stuff and just, uh, uh, you know, try to actually decode it and just inspect it out. That's all I'm going to do just to kind of show you a little a little like quick demo. Of course, we could just be much more complicated, but this is just kind of enough to kind of give us an idea. And so now if I actually use Elixir command and I run this script, you'll see it goes ahead and grabs that dependency, compiles it and actually runs it, right? And you might think, okay, this is kind of cool, but you know, is it going to actually do this every single time? Well, no. And I'll show you if I run this again, it's just going to run the script directly, right? So it's actually happening underneath. And I went ahead and opened up the folder. Is that there's actually a cache made? So on the Mac, at least, it's within uh, caches. Uh, so it's your user folder, uh, library, caches, mix. There's this installs folder. And then within over here, it looks like it takes a look at what version of Elixir plus also what version of uh, Erlang you have running. And you have this hash. And I can't remember exactly what actually is getting run, but this hash gets run, uh, gets compiled by looking at, I believe, your dependencies and also your code or something like that. I have to look more into it. And anyways, then we have some actually familiar things, right? We have our lock file. We have our depths folder. So here's our JSON. And uh, we also have our... Uh, our Elixir stuff, right? So, you know, and actually here's your mix install. And I believe the whole thing is running from over here. Uh, I may be wrong. Uh, but yeah, you can see, you know, everything is here, right? So we're basically kind of having this like temporary project. And so if you ever change your dependencies and maybe also if you change, uh, you know, your, I think if you change your dependencies, it's not going to be a problem. Or if it will actually change the hash. But I think if you change your code, then it shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't change anything for the hash, because I believe the hash is always dependent upon your dependencies. I may be wrong. Uh, but in any case, right, this is how we can start to actually use Elixir as a script now. So now it's becoming a much more interesting contender in the space. So in any case, I'm going to be looking some more at 1.12, because it does also has some other niceties to it. And so, uh, yeah, if you guys have a chance, go ahead and comment below. We'll see what you think. And let me know if you guys are going to be using this in your production uh, cases coming up pretty soon. So this is Alan from Plagora. Please subscribe if you haven't. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. Hi. Please feel free to ask us any questions about Elixir, Flutter, or anything else in programming. Here's our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We will answer your questions every Friday. Ya mantai ge duck man all. Yo wenti ji da wen wo.